We're going to talk some other college football. I'm joined right now by the head coach at the University of Louisville. He is 26-14 and 14 in four years there. He led Louisville to a Sugar Bowl win over Florida last season. They beat Ohio 49-7 to on Sunday in their season opener. Louisville ranked number eight. And they've got Eastern Kentucky Saturday, noon Eastern. I'm joined by Louisville head coach Charlie Strong. Charlie, it's good to have you back. How are you? I'm doing well, Jim, and thank you for having me on. Good to have you. Thanks for doing it. You beat Ohio 49-7. to Charlie, you put up over 600 yards in total offense in that opener Sunday. I know you've had a chance to look at the tape. Did you like what you saw? I really love what I saw, Jim, and it was just fun to watch Teddy uh, just go out and play the way he performed through five touchdown uh, passes and watch our receivers go and catch the ball. Our offensive line did a great job of protecting, and defensively we played well. So just overall, just very pleased with the way we played. All right, then. Teddy Bridgewater, 23 of 28, 355 yards. He had those five touchdowns. You know, Charlie, there's been so much preseason hype about him as a Heisman candidate. What did he show you in that game? Well, he he's a coach, Jim, and what he does is he, the players have so much respect for him, and they way, they love the way he approached the game because he's always prepared. and And so when he goes onto the field, he knows exactly what he wants to do and what he's trying to get, what he wants to do for his team and for himself. Right. So, would you say, Charlie, is that the biggest difference between Teddy from last year and the Teddy we see right now? Oh, a, a major difference. And, uh, last year compared to this year now he, he's just so comfortable with the offense where we can just turn it over to him and just and we did a, a, one of the series there during the second series of the game we said hey teddy you're going to go call it and he took the team down the field through a long touchdown pass to uh copeland for a big one but uh, we're so comfortable just letting him just go in and directing the offense louisville head coach charlie strong is my guest you know Jadavian Clowney is an amazing player but the nfl is a quarterback's league so if Clowney and bridgewater are both on the board Charlie, and you had the first pick in next year's draft. Who would you take? Oh, I have to take Teddy. <laughs> well, I got to take Teddy because it, it's my guy. But uh, but no, I, but it, it's just you know with him having another year, I don't know if he's gonna step out, Jim. We don't know yet, but he he is an outstanding football player. Charlie Strong, my guest. You know, one of the questions, and it's still early, but one of the questions you've been asking about your team is: Are you elite? Are you Alabama? Are you LSU? It's only one game, but with that game under your belt, do you have an answer at this point? Do you know what you have? I really don't, Jim. And what I try to tell our team all the time is we had to play at game level. We had to take each game one at a time and, and take advantage of the opportunities that's been given to us. And then at the end of the season, we'll just see where we measure up and where we're going to end up. But what we cannot worry about what everyone else is saying. It's got to be all about us, and we had to take care of ourselves. You go out and perform at your best, and then we'll just see what happens. You know, you don't want you guys getting caught up, but what about your approach of your team? For instance, you had players watching other top 10 teams on Saturday, and you said that the way they watched those games told you something about their mindset. What do you mean by that? Well, what happened uh, a year ago, Jim, we would watch those teams play, and uh, they'd be, you know, they were ooh and ah. But this year, when we, and, you know, on Saturday when we watched some of those good games, and we watched some really good games on Saturday, they weren't so caught up into the to the, those other teams. You know, they were just looking at them and saying, hey, that's the way we got to go out and play. And it was never that mindset where, hey, that's the way we have to go out and play because they were caught up and where they never thought that they were just as good enough or on those levels. That was, but now it's it's a whole different team, a, bit, a, a much more mature football team. Louisville head coach Charlie Strong, my guest. Yeah, you know, I guess if there was one concern, if there was a concern, you had 11 penalties for 90 yards. Would you look at that as first game jitters or were the guys lacking some focus and discipline at times? A uh, lack in focus and discipline because uh, you, you look at us on offense. We had five, uh, five false start penalties and two holding. You know, you had seven there and you had two in the kicking game. So it was it was just a lack of focus where they just had to lock in and, and play the game for 60 minutes. You know, it's nine months ago, Charlie, and it's a whole new season and you can't look back and you've got to look ahead. But you've had some time. Just how big a win over Florida in the Sugar Bowl was that for your program? Oh, it was it was a big win, Jim. And and I, the reason why I, I look at that win is just that I think that was the win that made them step up their game, and they can realize they realize now that they can step up their game. And because Florida's a good football team, and now for them to go in and compete with Florida, it gave them more confidence and, and made them feel better about themselves. Where hey, guys, if we just go prepare the right way, then we can go play with these type of teams. Now, the American Athletic Conference, Charlie, is not expected to be as tough this year, at least right now. That's how it would appear. Although Cincinnati did have a really nice win over a Big Ten opponent. 
Are you concerned at all about your strength of schedule? Is it something that could come back to haunt you? No, I, I just, you know, uh, Jim, I try not to focus on it at all and try not to get our team to even focus on it. Because I say, guys, if we just go handle our business and we just keep each and every week go, going out and competing, then at the end of the day and we see where we end up, we'll, the right the right judgment will be made for us and we'll be placed in the right position. Charlie, let me ask you about Michael Dyer. He had four carries, 48 yards. He had a touchdown against Ohio. He's a guy who left Auburn after his sophomore year. He was dismissed from Arkansas State. What kind of questions did you ask him before he joined the team? Well, what I did, uh, Jim, is that he he had um, uh, Fritz Hill, who's the president of Arkansas Baptist, where he had ended up going to uh, finish up his, his work so he can go and have a chance to go move on to the next level. And then he had a uncle who was a, who's a sergeant there in the police department in Little Rock. So I, I spoke with both of them. And I and I said, and Fritz, he said, I will bring him to you, Fitz Hill did. And I said, no, no, I don't want you to bring him to me. I want him to speak for himself. I want him to come up here by himself. And so when Michael came up here, the first question I asked him is, why do you deserve another chance? And I just wanted to hear what he was going to say. And I said, you know, I said, there's so much out there has been said about you. I don't know if you can change. I don't know if you are about that. But I said, if I take you in this program, you have no choice but to change. And and it's not going to be your way. It's going to be our way. You know, in, in terms of it being your way and not his way, you actually made him sign a behavioral contract. Is that as unusual as it sounds? Well, it really it isn't. And, and what I didn't want to do is treat him any different than any other player on this team. Because I've had players that get in trouble, and, and I had players that do things they shouldn't do. So I said, oh, let's not bring him in here. And all of a sudden, he, he did, we have to just watch over him and watch his every move. We're making sign a behavioral contract, which I've done with players here. You know, like if a guy has missed a, you know, a number of classes, or if a guy has broken a core value, I made him sign a core. I mean, I made him sign a behavioral contract, and I said, you know, if you do it again, then you, you got to go find somewhere else to play. But what I didn't want to do with Michael was just feel like that. You know, we're just going to be for every time he turns around, somebody's going to be looking at him and watching him. You know, I wonder, I mean, typically do those contracts work? Do they feel like if they put their name on something, they're more likely to adhere to it? Oh, they will. And But I explained it to them. I said, let me tell you now, before you sign this now, you better read it and read it closely. Because if you break, if, if it's written in stone right now, and if it happens, then you know what the penalty is going to be. So you had to understand that before you sign it. And I said, now, think about it. Now, do you, do you really want to sign this? Oh, yeah, I signed it. I said, okay. Well, if you sign it now, you're telling me that whatever's written here, I'm going to do everything you ask me to do, Coach. Yes, Coach, I will do it. Hmm. Louisville Coach Charlie Strong, my guest. Charlie, one last thought. It's interesting to me. But during the offseason, you sent a letter to agents and said, do not contact our players or their families until after the 2013 season. What led you to do that? Well, what happened, uh, Teddy was just get hit from all angles. And then his mom is in Miami, so a, a people was coming to see her, trying to get in touch with her, getting her phone number, and a, a number of uh, other players. And so I didn't want that to become a distraction. And I didn't want our players to sit and all of a sudden they had to start wondering about what agent should I go with. And, and then one guy came up and said, hey, Coach, you know, this agent called me. Is he a good agent? Son, you don't need to worry about that right now, Okay. What you need to worry about is getting ready for this football season. And then at the end, because I told him, I said, right now an agent can do nothing for you. So let's worry about helping this football team. But I did it to just protect our marquee players so they weren't getting bombarded. Now, I sent a letter out there, you know, it's still they, the agents are going to do what they're going to do, but I just wanted them to be aware that we knew what was going on. And so finally, is the agent the agent contact issue, has it gotten worse over the years, or is it just a matter of your team getting so much better and attracting so much more agent or interest from the agents? A combination of both. I think it's gotten worse, but with the number of players and what we have now, and then we have some success, then you're, that's what comes with it now. There's a lot that comes with it, and the agents are one of them. Louisville, starting off strong. They've got that big win over Ohio next up. Eastern Kentucky on Saturday noon Eastern. Charlie Strong, my guest. Charlie, great to visit with you. Thanks so much. Thank you, Jim. Thank you for having me on. Always good to talk to you, Charlie. Thank you.